So, we've looked at one algorithm that's used to find the minimum spanning tree, and now we're going to look at the second. Uh, the second is known as Prune's algorithm, and is quite similar in style, um, but, I mean, if you looked at how Kruskal's was working, uh, edges, because you're putting them in order of size, and then you're picking them in order, uh, if you draw that on a graph, then it appears that the edges can be like popping up all over the place as the tree is built. For prims, you start as a vertex and you choose shortest edges away from that vertex that joins each vertex, uh, each vertex by the edge, and it grows out like a tree. Um, so there's there is a difference in how in the style but they are relatively similar in what you need to write down. So Prim's algorithm starts by saying that start the tree by picking any vertex. Usually in the exam you'll be told which vertex to start with, okay? So um, that is just to make the examiner's life a lot easier, okay? But in reality you could start with any vertex you like. Then you look at each arc that joins the vertex already in the tree to one not yet in the tree. This concept here is something that students find quite difficult to grasp. Okay, So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start by looking at this example. Okay, So here is a, a graph, a network rather, that we're going to find the minimum connector for, minimum spanning tree. So let's say we're starting at A. We've been told to start at A. Okay. So at A, what we do is we look at each of the edges coming out of A, and we pick the shortest one. Okay. So that would pick A to B. So I make sure I'm taking a note that the first edge I picked is A, B and it has weight 7, okay? So it's best to keep note of this. Right, I've now connected A and B, and I'm looking at the edges coming out of both points, out of both vertices, for the shortest edge that will not create a cycle. Okay, so I've got 11, 8, and 9. So the shortest one is the 8. So A, F, 8, which connects F. Okay? Now I'm then looking at all of the edges coming out of all three vertices BC, AE, and FE. And the shortest one is FE. Okay, so that's the next one I pick. Right, I'm then looking at all of the edges coming out of these four vertices. So B, C, A, E, E, C, and E, D. Well, I can't pick A, E because that will create a cycle. So then I must be looking at E, D. Okay, so this is the part that says, uh, look at each arc that joins the vertex already in the tree to one not yet in the tree. Okay, so I wouldn't even look at AE, it wouldn't just go in a cycle, but I'm, that would be looking at a vertex or an edge that would connect a vertex that's already in the tree. So add the one with least weight to the tree. So in this case, it's ED. Right, sorry, keep note of it. ED9, that's connected D. So I've got one vertex left, okay? And then the last one is CD. At 10. That's the shortest one. Okay, so my uh, minimum spanning tree looks something like this. Label it A, B, C, D, E, F. And make sure the weights are on there as well. 7, 8, 8, 9, and 10. So the minimum spanning tree has a total of 15, uh, 23, 32, 42. Just check that. 19, 
27, 35, 42. Yeah. Okay, so Miller's spanning tree total of 42. And that's how Prims works. Note that if more than one arc could have been chosen, we pick one at random. Okay, so if there had been two edges of the same weight that we could have chosen, just pick one, it doesn't matter which. Okay, and we repeated this step until all of the vertices were chosen and part of the tree. Okay, and that is the first example of how prims works.